I'm Chef Dennis, and we're here live at the Boathouse, and I'm excited to be here today. And I have the general man general manager, correct? Correct, Jacob. And Jacob. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here, Jacob? Uh, I am the general manager. I've been uh, with the Boathouse since day one that we've opened up. Um, you know, very proud and honored to be part of this team. Uh, I oversee the uh, everyday operations for everything in the building alongside my partner, Chef Bob, who you're going to meet here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, together we, we do everything that we can in this building to make it survive and, and handle the tough crowds, but it, it's, it's a fascinating building. It's got an awesome dynamic, um, and we're just honored to be part of this team. It is such a beautiful restaurant, and it goes on forever. You've got private rooms here in the back or extra dining rooms. You've got the dock. You've got the dockside bar. You've got sofas out there to sit on by the boats. I, it, just, it just blows me away that how beautiful and how much thought was put into the design of this place. It, it was. It was, a, it was a very interesting concept, and it's very deceiving when you come up to the front door. Um, when you come up to the front, all you see is a retail store and yeah. one of our bars. But the second you step through, you, you look down to the right and you just see dining rooms for miles. We have uh, six dining rooms. Uh, that's including our two private dining mm -hmm. rooms that we have. So if we have a private dining event, we will uh, make our adjustments to our floor that way. Um, and then as soon as you come out to the back area, you see all of our beautiful antique boats from the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, on display. Our outside dock bar, which is floating out above the water yeah. over there. Um, it is deceptively small from the outside, but it's probably one of the biggest buildings here at Disney Springs. I believe it. And you couldn't have had a better location right on the lake. I mean, you've got great views from so many spots along the back of the restaurant. We've got tables on the on the uh, decks going all the way around. Or just if you want to relax. And like I said, go sit them. We did that the other night. Got our drinks and sat on the sofa and just watched watch life go by yeah it, it, there's a lot of different dynamics to the restaurant you know, you know we have you know, like you said we have formal dining rooms private dining rooms we have lounge seating we have casual seating out on the dock bar uh, it, it's you can do whatever you want here in the building and, and with being part of a uh, Gibson's restaurant group who is the uh, managing partner uh, that operates the building you know our service philosophy is, is we're gonna take care of you any way we possibly can if you want to sit on those couches and enjoy yourself and have a casual uh, date night together great if you want to have a full course meal served to you you want steaks you know what we're going to serve it to you down there as well yeah. um, we're here to take care of customers and make sure that they're uh, their number one priority for us yeah and that's a good philosophy to have and especially here in orlando because people come here on vacations from all over the world and they expect an experience and you certainly give it to them Correct. Yeah, I, you know we have all over the world. I mean, nailed on the head all over the world, and not only all over the world, but our locals as well. Yes. Um, that's the beauty of what Disney has been doing with Disney Spring is they're they're driving local business down here. Okay. So in the boathouse, you know, we're big enough we can take. We want to take on all the locals, and we also want to take on everybody who's traveling from all over the world to uh, experience our restaurant and experience Disney Springs as a whole. I know it's become our favorite local watering hole or mm -hmm. restaurant. So right. we're happy to be here, and you know it's such a a nice trip coming over here now and Disney's made it easier with the parking garages so things are getting you know, they're still yeah. under construction there's still a lot of construction going on but it is a masterpiece in the makings here a lot of construction and you know by the end of the year uh, it's gonna be yeah. eye-opening how much this area has changed and the, and the evolution of Disney Springs you know from you know being downtown Disney before and being Pleasure Island yeah. after that and now being Disney Springs the overall evolution and growth is just tremendous, and we are very blessed to be down here, right on the 50-yard line. You could say we're we're right in the middle. We ha we do have a outstanding location, and you can over come on our back door, and you have the best view of Disney <laughs> no. Springs. And the sunsets down here are breathtaking. Um, they're absolutely amazing every single night. You got a beautiful sunset, yeah. so it's it's a very enjoyable place to work at. And I've seen some of your other dining rooms, and they are pretty awesome there's there's is there a trophy room or a trophy room and the regatta room are two of our dining rooms those are considered our private dining rooms mm -hmm. however we open them up for uh, dinner business when we uh, when we're using them for private dining events uh, a lot of attention to detail was, was uh, taken um, into designing the building and decorating the building um, the uh, lake house is, is is one of our main dining rooms and it's a beautiful beautiful room. I mean, it reflects being inside of a lake house. We have what we call the Admiral's Bar is located inside. That's kind of a sophisticated uh, scotch and whiskey bar um, on display, but you can get whatever you want, mm -hmm. wherever you want. 
And then the other rooms, the twin transom, the runabout, and the captain's raw bar of our other dining rooms, um, those are going to be more of your casual um, casual dining rooms. But at the same time, it, it can be made at any moment that you want. Um, live entertainment starting at 9 o'clock every night. And then, you know, the dock bars is just an outstanding place to hang out. Yes, and, it is. And the main thing with us is our amphicars. You know, we have the amphicars. Um, it's actually one in the water right I over know, there. I uh, but the amphicars are just the neatest things in the world uh you know in the 1960s they developed these and these are the original cars these aren't really? these aren't mock-ups mock at all these are the original cars from the 1960s wow. um a lot of care a lot of love is put into those to make sure they're operational make sure they're safe um and and running every single day uh it's just amazing when you sit outside and you see how many people pull up their iPhones mm -hmm. to watch them splash oh down into the water. It, it, it's such a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. And then to get the view of Disney Springs from out there on the water, it, it's a great opportunity for us. And, and we embellish it and we love it. And our captains are, are one of a kind. They will entertain you for the for the whole half hour trip that you have out there. You, <laughs> you'll, you'll love every minute of it from <laughs> splash down to uh, driving back up. It's, and it's and you can guarantee it won't end up like Gilligan's Island, right? No, no. absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, none of that's going to be happening. No. Okay. Uh, but the, the weirdest feeling in the world um, is being in that car. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like being in a movie and you see you're in the car and you're going into water and you kind of have that fright going on. But it's nothing to be scared about, trust me. But when you hit that water, it's just the neatest feeling and the smiles that it puts on people's faces from the from the customers who are watching it to the customers who are in the car. You hear screams, you hear cheers, you hear just joy coming out of people when they hit those cars, uh, hit the water, and you start cruising along. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful dynamic. Yeah. And we are outside, folks. So there's planes, there's helicopters, there's boats, there's all kinds, because Disney Springs is alive. And, and I also know you have a yacht, too, that goes out occasionally. We do. We have a 40-foot uh, Italian water taxi that we take uh, guests out. Uh, we're working on a lot of different programs to support that vessel. but. It is a, a beautiful boat, beautiful, beautiful boat. Um, and we take those out for sunset cruises and, and private events and couples can take that, yep. take it out. Um, but it, we are all, uh, all about making sure they're taken care of and the boats are beautiful, um, all guided by our captains. So our captains take you on the cruise. So you, there's no thinking involved, just enjoyment. Yep. So. And what could be better than that? Just yes. enjoyment on enjoyment. a beautiful lake in a beautiful downtown area of Disney. It's just, it's great. I mean, and, and you feed them on the boats too, if they want. We can't. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We do uh, some of the cruises that we do. We have the uh, uh, get a bottle of Prosecco and some strawberries. We're also working on a wine and dine cruise coming up here. We'll be doing a sunset hour long cruise up the river. Um, doing a wine and cheese and uh, wine and cheese tasting. It's oh, going to wow. be it's going to be special. So you'll actually go up the river away then too. All the way up the river, all the way up to Port Orleans and back down. Very It'll be an nice. hour long, hour -long uh, trip. Uh, get bottles of wine. Uh, do some wine tastings. Chefs put together a gorgeous spread of meat and cheese to mm -hmm. uh, talk about and feed while you're there. And mm. it, it just becomes one of the best occasions for people. Complete strangers become best friends yep. by the end of it. It's it's absolutely magical. Well, food and prosecco will do that. They, that will that, that will do it to you. Yeah, that <laughs> makes people that are barely tolerable happy by the end of the end of the ride. So. Yeah, and award winning uh, Italian wines to fit the theme of the uh, Italian water taxi. So it's it's well themed. It's Excellent. it's well put together, um, and it is worth every second that you're on it. I'm sure it's it is. Well. We've talked a lot about the boathouse and all the things you offer, and it is just, uh, again, it's a masterpiece. I love it here. And I we have some drinks in front of us. You we want do. To tell us uh, what we have? Yes. I, we Right here we have our uh, blueberry lemonade. Um, it is a delicious, refreshing summertime drink that we put on the menu um, that definitely is for you. Um, it's great. Fresh blueberries are inside of it. Uh, it's a vodka-based drink. Very refreshing. Uh, does come with the souvenir glass as well so that's a take really? home um, as well yeah so it's it's nice it's and we use the crushed ice and it just stays cool stays crisp you can sit out on that dock bar yeah. for hours and sip on sip I, on our blueberry lemonades those are very good and they would go down pretty easy so they, they would go down yeah. very easy and our other one is uh, our old fashioned and uh, I personally I, I love old fashions um, I feel that ours is probably or is the best old fashioned I have ever tasted very nice um, it, it's got a nice, smooth orange uh, mm -hmm. flavor on the back end. That's the bitters we put in there. Um, it's not overpowering with whiskey. It, it's no. blended perfectly. Um, the mixologist that we had from our uh, corporate office, Gibson's, uh, Gibson's corporate office, came down and taught us the proper way to make it. And we got the right ingredients for it. We got the Luxardo cherries in there. 
um, you know, the orange peel, ice balls. The ice spheres is pretty much what makes it because it, it yeah. doesn't water it down. It slowly melts. So you, you, it maintains that flavor throughout the drink. So yeah. it's 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 one of my favorites. So I wanted to share it with you. Well, thank you. <laughs> that is, it is wonderful. And I could smell the orange just mm -hmm. coming up at me when I picked it up, too. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a nice People drink soft, with their nose as much yeah. as they eat with their nose. So Absolutely. it's important that when you bring it up, you, you get that nice smell, that nice orange aroma. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not that you don't get that bitter whiskey face afterwards. No. It's, it's, it's just smooth all the way through. Very smooth. Very yeah. smooth. It was felt almost a little smoky. Uh, but very. You know, I'm, I'm not a whiskey connoisseur, but that was a very nice, smooth flavor to mm -hmm. it. It rounded out as you drank it. So yeah, we're using the Jack Daniel single barrel in that drink. Right. So so you, you're getting a good quality. In there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I, I did go to some whiskey classes, so I did learn a little bit about whiskey. And yeah. and when you mentioned the ice cube, one of the things they said was when you make a drink, you have to be careful that it doesn't you, it it dilutes, but it not dilutes too much. Yeah, there's absolutely. there's a method to it, especially when you when you're using any type of brown liquor because mm -hmm. you want to get that full flavor. Yeah. So you don't want to water it down and, and turn that brown liquor into a yellowish color. No. Um, and using an ice sphere is definitely the way to do it because that's gonna slowly melt and it's mm -hmm. gonna add. And it's great, you know, just using the ice spheres over uh, a nice single malt scotch. It definitely help, helps out because a lot of people put water in their scotches, but you know, just use that and it'll slowly melt and it'll take care of you. Now, I don't think I've been at a bar that I have seen an ice sphere before. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of novel. Yeah, they, it, a lot of bars are turning into it now. It, it definitely gives you that classic cocktail feel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back in the day when they used to not have, you know, the molds for it, you would see um, bars use gigantic ice blocks and they would just chip a chip uh, a big chunk of ice yeah. and put it inside there and so that's kind of where the overall ice sphere obviously it fits better if, it, if mm -hmm. it's a cylinder but you know old ways how they do is you know they would get those big blocks of ice they would bring them into the bars and they would store them and that's where they get all their ice from so the barkeep would just go smack a hammer with a little <laughs> chisel and a big chunk of ice would come and they put that in there and pour it on there so that's that's kind of the the development of the ice sphere on there so it, it's it's a great concept very good. We've gone from a, a Fred Flintstone style ice Absolutely. to a, a, a sophisticated mm -hmm. ice sphere. So I'm glad. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. This has been a pleasure so far. Uh, just learning more about the boathouse and about the operations and everything that goes into it in this beautiful facility and getting to try two wonderful drinks. Two wonderful drinks and you are in for a treat once Jeff Bob comes over here. He's going to, uh, you are going to see what the boathouse uh, is all about and, it, and it's our great food. And Chef Bob has done a wonderful job of developing this menu and staying consistent, and and you're in for a treat. So I'm I'm excited for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have been here before, so I I am anticipating great things here. I know what's he told me what was coming, and I'm going. I shouldn't have eaten for three days. You know, <laughs> you will walk out of you. I'll see you on the couches at about by eight o'clock tonight, probably, just relaxing. So. Probably. And we'll make sure the old fashions keep coming for you. <laughs> thank too. you, thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's thank been you for a pleasure. Time. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, great. So we're going to bring Chef Bob over, and we'll start bringing us some food. So let me take these drinks over to my assistant. Hey, Chef Bob, come on, sit down. Hi, Chef Dennis. Nice to see you again. Good to see you you're, again, sir. You're getting to be a regular around here. I know. I, I like I said, I come here. Whenever there's someone new in town, this is where we bring them. Well, keep on coming. Yeah, you know it's uh, it's it's dependable. It's American fare. You know, people sometimes have a different palate, and not that there's anything wrong with any other kind of food, but we know we can depend on this to be delicious and to please just about anybody that's coming. And you know, the menu is uh, really designed to do that. Um, the menu we we're, we're making everything from scratch. The ingredients that we use are expensive. So yeah. The food is is definitely not a cheap restaurant, and but there is something on the menu for anybody. We have uh, sliders. You could get two filet mignon sliders for twelve dollars. You could get a hamburger. And today we ordered. We we actually started a new uh, thing, which is yeah. competition style baby back ribs. Wow. And those are made exactly as we, as we did in uh, competition barbecue uh, championships that I was a part of. And uh, we have a, a certified pit master here that makes those for us. Oh my God! And then that's just that doesn't even begin to talk about the seafood and the steaks. Yes. And uh, the first thing that we're going to sample today is a selection from our raw bar. We have something that's called on the menu a uh, Shuckers um, tasting uh, flight, which is oh my God. which is six oysters. Right here is the raw bar platter. That is just fantastic. And then right here, we're going to have a, a Shucker's Oyster Flight. 
take some pictures before we get too involved. And I can always edit this part out. So right here we have six different oysters. Those are the chef's choice of the day. Mm -hmm. Today we have um, everything from East Coast oysters, starting off from Canada, Massachusetts, uh, Virginia, and then we have a couple of West Coast oysters from um, Puget Sound, Washington, and British Columbia. And then over here we end up with a, um, a cucumber mignonette. Then we have a citrus chili vinaigrette, and finally traditional uh, cocktail sauce. But really the mignonette sauce is what elevates the oyster to a higher level, and that's what we really recommend for the guests to try. Now, what is the real difference in where the oysters come from? Uh, really, there's there's two distinct types of oysters that are common, and one is a, is an East, East Coast oyster. They're called Virginicas, mm -hmm. and then the West Coast oyster are called Pacific oysters, and they're different species. And the, the East Coast oyster, you when you're tasting it, you're, you're mostly comparing different salt uh, or salinity levels okay. and uh, the texture of the oyster. And some of them have a, a little bit of a sweetness to them, but they're all more or less the same, whether you get a, a Gulf oyster from Florida or a, or like this oyster right here from, from Canada, uh, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. they're all exactly the same species. So the in, in oyster harvesting, they call meroir like they call terroir in wine mm -hmm. drinking. Uh, the oyster is the, the, the product of its environment. So if it's in a place where there's a high salinity, a lot of seawater, mm -hmm. it'll have that flavor. And if it's from a, a more of a brackish water, inland up a river or in, in a place that has a lot of seaweed and algae, it'll take on those kind of flavors too. So the, the West Coast oyster, uh, almost all oysters, probably 90% plus, mm -hmm. are are, are farm-raised to some extent. Okay. That means that they're, the, the seeds are cul cultured and that they're put in some sort of a rack and bag system so that they're, they're elevated off the bottom of the water and that they get to grow in a clean environment. Um, that's most of the East Coast oysters and a lot of the West Coast oysters are, are called beach culture where they grow right on the beach. Really? And, it, and I read this, it's so interesting, at low tide, the oyster farmers just go down and they pick the oysters they want off the beach and put them in bags that has a, a, a rope with a, a buoy attached. And mm -hmm. at high tide, they just go grab the buoys and pull all the bags of oysters up on the boats. Oh my God. Yeah, so if you look, if you try the two different kinds, here, let me set you up one. I just wanna show everybody again too. Show get you two different oysters with two different okay. you like spice right oh yeah who doesn't okay. like spice well this one's got a little bit of serrano chili in it Ooh. now what goes into the different mignonettes i mean when you're when you're deciding the flavors of them uh mignonette um so here go ahead and try this one right okay. here i'll pass that over to uh, you that's a pleasant bay oyster and that's from massachusetts with a cucumber mignonette wow Nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, so when you taste that, you'll, you'll know the difference. Uh, the, the West Coast oyster, a lot of time is characterized not so much as just the salinity by f different flavors like cucumbers and melons mm -hmm. and more creaminess. The meat's usually typical, uh, thicker, and more of a creamy texture that, that to the nice. meat. That was very creamy. And here, so this one right here, you can try. That's a, a perfect example of a, a golden mantle. That's a British Columbia uh, Pacific uh, oyster right there. It's excellent weather, and we have typically any day. This is a this is our our oyster menu today, and we typically have anywhere from eight to fifteen different kind of oysters from all over the country. We've even had oysters from um, Alaska and New Zealand here before. You know, I, I know there's a lot of different kind of oysters, and for people that are into them, this has got to be like heaven to them. It is great because uh, there's a lot of oyster bars in Florida. Yes, there are. And but but for most for the most part, they're all serving the same thing: either uh, Gulf oysters from Texas or Apalachicola. Mm -hmm. And um, th there is some kind of uh, small concern about uh, vibrio bacteria when you're talking about warm water oysters. Mm -hmm. So we don't serve any warm water oysters here. Okay. Um, we serve only cold water oysters here at the boathouse. Okay. And it's really fun as the chef getting to to taste all these different kinds that are uh, oyster the oyster business is kind of like the microbrewery business yeah. it's it's exploding and you have all these little uh operations setting up 
trying to make their oysters different than the next guys up the road. And the, the, the way that they, they cultivate them determines what the shell looks like and the color and the salinity and the flavor of the meat. It's really, really fun. Well, and I and the, uh, just to answer your question, mm -hmm. a mignonette is basically uh, the, the, the standard mignonette, you know, if you go all the way back in French cooking, mm -hmm. is, is, is red wine vinegar with shallots and black pepper. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an astringent sauce to complement the oyster. Ours, we, we jazz it up a little bit. So we use, uh, in our, our cucumber mignonette, mm -hmm. we use cucumbers. We have rice wine vinegar in there, a little bit of sugar, um, and the black pepper too. And then on the citrus vinaigrette, that's a, um, a white vinegar with some citrus juice. And then we have this the uh, chilies in there too. So that's that's what makes it fun. They, they really complimented them. And, and the first oyster I had, the Pacific one, I could taste the salinity. But it wasn't it wasn't bad. But the cucumber was perfect with it. Yeah, it and is I, great. Honestly, I never thought of that. And a lot, you know, a lot of places people eat around here, especially oyster bars, uh, Florida style. They're mm -hmm. they're just putting horseradish and cocktail sauce, and you really can't even taste the oyster. No. It's kind of like what you do if you don't want to taste the oyster. You put all that stuff on it yeah. instead. I know they used to give it to us in a little shooter glass with that in it because yeah. <laughs> you didn't really want to taste the oyster. And then but. so on this platter right here, we have the, the shrimp. Those are U12 uh, wild caught Sea of Cortez Baja shrimps. And then we have a lobster cocktail. The lobster cocktail is uh, just, um, it's very simple. It's a perfectly cooked Maine lobster that's chilled and served cold. Um, we have the stone fresh stone claw. Those are in season for about another month now. And we always have them when they're in season. Um, interesting thing about the stone crab claw is it's a it's a Florida product. It's it's very local. They catch a lot of them on the west coast and all the way down to the Keys. Yeah. And when the fisherman catches the claw, they break off the crusher claw, and then they throw the, the crab alive back yes. into the water. And then they bring them in. They cook the claws right at the processing facility, mm -hmm. and then they send them out. So we're we're getting them straight off the dock basically, and uh, you know we're 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 buying enough sea fresh seafood. To, to try to sell out every night. Mm -hmm. So we we know we don't have any of our fresh seafood um, hanging around here for more than uh, 24 or 48 hours maximum in our building. Uh, lobster is an interesting fact here. When we opened, we you know we weren't sure how much of that we were going to mm -hmm. sell, but my standing order on Saturday for lo live main lob lobsters for Saturday and Sunday is 600. Wow. Live main lobsters. So wow, that's just the live lobsters. Yeah, live lobsters. Wow. So we're selling a bunch of them. And so we have a couple of different sauces. Uh, we serve the cocktail sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a Gibson's classic. It's called a Bombay cocktail sauce. It has Bombay gin in there. Then we have what's called a, a, a Lady Rose sauce. is a pink kind of a, a cross between a, a cocktail and a tartar sauce for the lobster. And then we have the classic uh, mustard sauce for the, um, for the stone nope. claw. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try a fresh stone claw, Dennis? Absolutely. Oh. Can we get a couple side plates, please? Oh, I just love how this pulls right out so easily. And my first introduction, the stone crab and mustard, you think? Absolutely. That's the only way this to one? do it. Yes, yeah. that's it. Uh, I, I had never had one before, and it was like, wow. Mm. Oh, my God. That is a del rare delicacy, and it's only in Florida, and it's only oh. for about six months out okay. of the year. Yep. That is wonderful. If you've never had stone crab, you, you don't know what you're missing. And I, I know for the longest time I didn't. Uh, this is amazing. Mm. Oh my God. Now, how long you said six months these run for? About, about six months. They're, they're out all year, but there's a, Florida's doing a really good job with um, managing fisheries nowadays. So there's a close season for about half a year for stone crabs because wow. it takes time for those claws to regenerate. Yeah, and they really need to throw them back. I mean, I know some people might keep both of them, but, you know, if you take both claws, you're not giving the stone crab a fighting chance to survive. Absolutely. So as long as the, the rules are followed, it's a, yeah. it's a absolutely sustainable seafood, uh, local and fresh, and it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, my God. This is this is wonderful. I know. Don't fill up. I know. I know. I know. I know. I gotta stop myself. <laughs> that was good. Chris, how about the next course? So the next thing we're gonna bring out is a is a, a signature uh, dish of ours. It's really turned into a signature. It's a um, it's a lobster roll sandwich.
And uh, lobster roll is uh, is pretty common all over New England. Yes. Um, you know, even McDonald's was trying to serve a lobster roll a couple of months ago. I saw that. And what's different about ours is we're buying in fresh Maine lobsters mm -hmm. every day. A lot of places will typically buy uh, frozen lobster meat. Um, and, you know, that's that's probably not what you want to buy if you go to a fish market because when the lobsters die in the tank yes, and then they cook the lobsters, that's where the frozen meat comes from. So really, if you're going to eat a lobster, you want something that was fresh, you know, killed and then served right away. Mm -hmm. So we're um, we sell about 100 lobster rolls a day. So that means my prep team is back there having to cook and clean 100 lobsters a day just for one sandwich on the menu. Wow. And so we take all the meat out of the lobster. Mm -hmm. We dress it very, very lightly with uh, um, a little bit of mayonnaise with some fresh celery and some lemon zest. And it's very lightly dressed. And we actually take one whole one and a quarter pound main lobster and we keep all the meat together and we mix it and we put that on a toasted New England style bun. So one lobster per sandwich. One lobster per sandwich. You hear that, folks? One lobster per sandwich. So that's the lobster roll of the boathouse. And out coming along with that is the pit master, uh, David Ramos's um, famous, <laughs> soon to be famous, um, uh, baby back ribs. Baby back ribs. Got along. And uh, uh, when we were presenting this to our staff today, a lot of them didn't understand what competition style means. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is uh, a lot of uh, barbecue places will typical take the, the rib out of the package, mm -hmm. throw it in the smoker. Maybe they'll put some seasoning and maybe they won't. And then they'll smoke it till it's cooked and probably overcooked so it's falling off the yeah. bone. And then, you know, brush some sauce on it. And it's it's pretty good. We all grew up and we like, yes. we all love ribs and those are good ribs, but the competition style is different. And the reason why it's different is because in a barbecue competition, the, 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 the judge is going to make a judgment based on one bite. Mm -hmm. So it has to be really flavorful and it has to be a wow in one bite because they're not going to eat that no. whole rack of ribs. So things we do different is we, we marinate the, the, the ribs overnight okay. in a, a apple juice, a hot sauce, a sugar, and salt uh, mixture. Mm -hmm. And then once they're marinated, we dry them off. We, we season them with our fresh uh, barbecue spice that David uh, made just for the boathouse. And then we smoke that and we, for about one hour. We have a um, Southern Pride smoker back there that mm -hmm. we use cherry wood in. We take it out. And then there's the next step is that you put it in a in a pan with uh, butter, um, honey, and brown sugar and apple juice, and we wrap that so that at that point it's it's cooking in a moist environment, and that those wow. ingredients makes a glaze on the ribs. So that after that, then we brush it with a little bit of sauce, run it through the oven just to to crisp it up a little mm -hmm. bit, and then we take and we dust it with a little bit of the dry rub on top. So it's kind of like a Memphis style rib. It doesn't have a lot of sauce on it, mm -hmm. but we serve a little bit of the side of the sauce if you like to dip the, the rib Good inside time. there. And that comes with a ear of corn, fresh corn on the cob and some coleslaw. Oh. So, you know, that's a good lunch. That That's definitely a meal in itself. And I saw one of your managers was having the ribs and he looked like he was really into them. So. Yeah, and, and most people uh, haven't ever tasted a rib like that before. Yeah. You know, the only people who've tasted them are probably the ones that have the guts to sneak behind the scenes at the barbecue barbecue contest Dish, yeah. and ask the cook teams for a sample because they're really not supposed to serve those to people at, at those contests. Oh, wow. That's okay. Another uh, thing we're proud of here is that we do fresh cut fries for our, for our French fries. Mm -hmm. They um, certainly are. We do not um, have a freezer in our in our kitchen on the line where we cook the French fries. So nobody's pulling out a bag of frozen potatoes and frying them. They're fresh every day. Mm. It's a ton of work, but it's definitely worth the effort. That is beautiful. Never mind. Take some pictures. Right. While we're doing this. Those ribs look amazing. I like how you have them cut down too, so it's easier to, to deal with. Absolutely. And like I say, today's the first day for the ribs. We've been in research and development for about a month, trying to get the recipes uh, exactly right the way we want them. 
Well, they look pretty darn good from here. Here's a couple of wet naps for you because I know you're going to need them. There's a uh, yeah. shell bowl. You can put the bones in there. Show. Look at that lobster piled up on that. Wow. That's a head turner in the dining room. God, he doesn't like lobster. <laughs> That rack. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which end does it matter? No, take with, with whichever you know. Just rip one off. It, the other thing too is in a barbecue <laughs> contest, the judges don't have any utensils. Yes. It's only eating with your fingers. So, in the spirit of that, maybe we'll just both try one that way. Oh my god. <laughs> ho ho. These are without a doubt the best ribs I've ever had. That's an endorsement, I'll take it. It's an endorsement. Mm. I'll let you take the rest home with you in a doggy bag tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you haven't seen Lisa eat. She's small, but she can pack some food away. That's why I fell in love with her. Wow. Got a little kick to it. Yes. But the difference that you said about the meat, I can see. Okay, it's not just overcooked, dried out with sauce on it. Correct. It's got some character. It's got some different levels built in. I can taste you know, the complexity of the meat. It's not just like you slathered a bunch of sauce on it and here enjoy them, which like I said, is pretty good because we right. enjoy those. Right, right, right. But there's a lot more to these ribs. Thank you. Wow. Okay, maybe we can move those over there. Yeah. And then it's time to try a lobster roll. Oh my God. Okay, yes. yes, please. Now, you know what? Just bring it out uh, natural. We'll let Chef Dennis uh, dive into it. Oh, my God. This is. <laughs> That's a labor of love. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I can run out of words to describe some of this food. It's so good. Oh, my God. That. That, my friend, is money. Is to Thank quote. you. Thank you. So, yep, it's a labor of love. We have one person that comes in here every day, and all they do is clean lobsters for lobster rolls. Well, thank him very much for all of his hard work cleaning lobsters. Wow. That is so good. And, you know, I love French fries, and especially when I know that they're made fresh in-house and they're hand cut. Oh. And they're tossed with the Gibson's uh, roasting salt, which is our season signature seasoning. And when you come to the boathouse, we actually have this Gibson's roasting salt on the table, on every table. And if you want, you can buy some to take home with you in the retail shop. That is wonderful. Um, so a little bit about our seafood while we're waiting for the steaks to come out. Sure. We have a tremendous uh, variety of seafood here. We run a fish taco that's mm -hmm. really popular. Yes. And we try to buy local fresh fish. To, right now, we're running um, local uh, Ponce Inlet Amberjack. And it's it's just about the first of the season because they open up about a week ago fresh amberjack so we're buying those we we run uh anywhere from one to three um day boat specials and today we have a um, fresh whole uh, florida keys yellowtail snapper we roll that in uh, uh soy sauce and then we roll it in cornstarch and fry it and our actually our a uh, couple of our junior sous chefs came up with a dish for that it's a uh, uh, D, Chef D, she's from Barbados, mm -hmm. and she has a very traditional Barbadian coconut rice with beans cool. and a curry sauce that we serve with that whole fried yellowtail snapper. Oh it's fantastic. And if you're uh, if you want to be around the boathouse in about a week, mm -hmm. we're hoping to have some uh, fresh black sea bass coming out of Virginia, wow. and that's a really good fish, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So oh here we go. So this is a tomahawk rib chop, and if you like prime rib, that's exactly where that comes from. It's the same cut, except it has the whole rib bone attached. That's dry aged and wet aged. So it starts as a wet age for 14 days, and then it's dry for 14 days. We are not. 
Um, one of the things about our beef program we're, we're real proud of is that Gibson's, uh, which is our parent company, um, Gibson's Restaurant Group has a government designation called Gibson's USDA Blue Star Angus Beef. And um, that meets the criteria for the Blue Star Angus Beef. Um, a local uh, company over in, um, in, in Central Florida does all of our meat butchering for us. They're butchered, they're cut to our spec, they're aged to our specifications. Um, and so we we use a, we don't we don't have a grill in the kitchen. We use a broiler, mm -hmm. which is high heat, uh, 1500 degrees, which gives you that that nice seared crust on the outside, which you cannot get on a regular grill. And then so we uh, take that uh, tomahawk rib chop and uh, dry age it and broil it up. And uh, now you get a chance to try it. Oh my God! Now I have seen these in pictures. I have not seen one close up, and this is this is truly magnificent. Oh my goodness! If you like, if you have a dog at home, make sure you take the bone. I, I used to. I don't anymore. We, um, we had them uh, when we moved down. The uh, the steak the steak sauce that we serve with this mm -hmm. is a, is our own uh, mm. steak sauce. It's a custom uh, blend that we do, and it, it actually came. I'm proud to say, uh, two of my sous chefs uh, actually came up with the recipe and put it together. And we make it from scratch, and we sell a lot awful lot of steak sauce. And that the the, the steak sauce is um is uh, we get a lot of recipe requests for. Oh my god! But you can tell by that meat, you don't really need anything no. with it. It's really good as is. Not not at all. And these are all done in a broiler. Yes. Wow. Yep. It takes some skill to cook this meat this well. It does. And my believe me, my broiler cooks are better than me. They're real good at it. Oh wow! That's good. Mm. I think I'm going to have to try and yeah, see. Uh, I don't think I need a steak knife. No, it was, it was pretty tender. Now, Lisa, grab your phone and take a picture of me over here with this. That is a tomahawk. Oh, cool. Wait, wait, just wait. <laughs> A regular. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I had to do Fred Flintstone with that. Yeah, you sure did. Hi, Hi. That is magnificent. That is freaking magnificent. Now, oh, great, great. how many of those do you go through a night? Uh, you know, it's not the biggest seller because it's it's quite expensive. It's a lot of meat, too. and it, and it's a, a two people can probably share oh, that. Yeah, but we go about uh, probably through about. Two or three dozen of those a day. Wow, you know it's it's impressive, and you don't see those in a lot of places. For, you don't, and, and there's a reason for that. It's just because it, it's hard to make, it's hard to do right, and it's not something that you can just keep hanging around and you're walking. You got to have the clientele to move them. You got to have people coming here to know they're going to get this and they're going to get something really delicious. So. Most restaurants don't want to take the chance. And so we serve it by itself like this, mm -hmm. or you can get this as a as half of a surf and turf with a, a whole main lobster split and it's shared it's 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 meant for two people. <laughs> so if you come in and you get the surf and turf, you get the whole uh, rib chop and then you get a whole lobster and then you can split that with two people. And then you just go ahead and get um, a side of roasted potatoes or steamed asparagus with some uh, hollandaise sauce, and you're all set. Oh my goodness, that that is magnificent. Now you know I went almost 20 years without eating beef. Oh, you poor guy. It was a choice. It was it was. I had studied the martial arts. My instructor said stop eating red meat. I did, and I added pork back in. And then last year I said, you know, I'm going to start eating beef again. I don't eat a lot of it. But for special occasions, and this is definitely a special occasion. Wonderful. Oh my God, that was, that was just amazing. I think I see the folks at the next table looking at. It. I know, I know. These are our friends from up north. Uh, well, welcome, welcome to the boathouse. We, well, that's great, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Here, we're gonna move that yeah, over move there. Right over. This has been, you know, you have just rocked me here today. This is truly. An experience that I won't soon forget. This well, I saved the best for last. I know you did. We have the world famous, um, actually world famous uh, baked Alaska coming out here. Oh. And uh, once we opened, I'll tell you the story behind the baked Alaska. 
is that Gibson's Restaurant Group in Chicago is famous for giant desserts. Yeah. And when you finish a meal, you get a giant dessert. It's it just puts an exclamation point on the meal. So we we had to have a giant dessert here. <laughs> So long before this place was even built, mm -hmm. I was at home in my house with uh, one of my sous chefs, and we were trying to figure out what our giant dessert was going to wow. be. So we went out to, to Walmart and bought all this pastry and baking and stuff, and we brought it home, and uh, we started to, to coming up with a giant dessert. And what we ended up with was a, an ice cream version of a baked Alaska, okay. which we call s'mores. Baked Alaska. So the idea is a s'mores. Yes. So it's a graham cracker crust, Rocky Road ice cream on top. One of the whole one one whole pie, which makes four portions, has a gallon and a half of Rocky Road ice cream. Oh my god! And then on the outside of that, we have a meringue, <laughs> and then we take mini marshmallows and pack them all over the outside. Uh -huh. And then we take chocolate bars and break them up and stick them all up inside there. And then the then we freeze that. We were actually featured on the Chew on ABC TV, making this, and it's on it's out there on the internet. You can see it. And it's really fun. But uh, after it's a five day process to make the dessert. Wow. Because you have to do eat one step at a time, and you have to freeze it in between each step. So the last thing that we do is cut it into quarters, and then just before we serve it, we burn the outside with a torch. So that the the marshmallow and the is is burning and the chocolate's melting. It, it smells just like having s'mores at a campfire when it comes out to the table. Oh my god! And when it goes through the table, everybody's head turns in unison and they all watching it go. I I know when I was the first time I was here, I was looking on Instagram and some of the posts people had done, and I kept seeing that over and over again. I'm going, oh my god, what is that? If you go on if you go on Google and just Google baked Alaska, mm -hmm. the first hundred pictures that come up are, are our baked Alaska from the boathouse. And again, that is a classic dessert that most people have forgotten about over the years. And uh, you're reinventing it and bringing it back into the spotlight. So it, it, you know that's wonderful. And it's it's really fun. We also have another giant dessert. It's called um, Florida Sunshine Cake, and it's a it's a fresh made orange layer cake that has orange flavored cake. Everything is from scratch here. So w my guys are back there squeezing oranges and zesting oranges, and we make an orange flavored cream cheese frosting, oh. and then we stack this thing up. And one whole cake weighs thirty pounds. <laughs> So one portion is about six pounds because we get five portions out of a cake. And when that comes to the table with a knife stuck in the top, it's 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 a it's a showstopper. It's a statement. And you know the menu says that it serves four, uh -huh. but I'm at the end of a meal here. I'm positive you could get twenty portions out of one of those orange cakes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know it's probably the best deal uh, going for for if you wanted to get a dessert to feed a whole bunch of oh people. God. So if you're looking for a great wedding cake, just buy one orange cake. Holy moly. So there is the S'mores Baked Alaska. And you know what? You can get a picture, and then Chris will uh, lay it down and cut it and get a couple of portions going here. Oh. Wow. That is. That's a cake. That is just impressive. That is a cake. That is a mountain. Besides that, we have a couple of other fun desserts. We have something called a whiskey cornbread cake, okay. which is also uh, you know, one of my creations. Is we wanted to come up with something unique for the South and the boathouse, and we, we actually took the idea of cornbread and lightened it up and made it into a cake. And we make, we have a we, we take whiskey and we make a homemade whiskey caramel syrup, and we put that into a cake mold, and then we pour the cake batter in there and we bake it inside the the syrup. Wow! And then we take that out, we drizzle fresh mar macerated fruit that has a whiskey syrup on it, and then we drizzle some of that uh, whiskey. Um, caramel sauce over the top of it with some uh, actually a uh, buttermilk whipped cream and that's really good and then we have a, a another one is is fun little take on a traditional Florida dessert is a key lime pie in a mason jar Ooh. so we have a very traditional key lime pie you know 
uh, you know, really, really uh, made the right way, except the only difference, we put a little lime zest into the custard. And then we bake that right inside of a, um, a mason jar with a little bit of a crust on the bottom. And it's really nice. You bake it right in the mason we jar. We do. We bake it right in the jar. Yeah. That's amazing. Here, we got to get Chris on camera. <laughs> yeah. Cutting this thing up. Chris is one of our uh, top servers. He's been here since day one here with us at the boathouse. There's actually a, a blog out there where they're having me uh, take a picture with the uh, big Alaska. I bet. Wow. That looks, oh, that is heavenly. Mm -hmm -hmm. Here, pass that one over there. Mm. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'll try this crust. I think your friends are the luckiest people in the state of Florida right now. You know, <laughs> it's good to have Chef Dennis as a friend because I got some good friends. Absolutely. My neighbors, my, my friends and neighbors say the same thing to me because I like to cook at home a lot. Mm -hmm. And they know that whenever they get the phone call and it's my name on their phone, they're, they're, they're putting away their dinner plans and they're coming to my house. They'll have the meatloaf tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. My my neighbors have started to notice. I hadn't done it as much here, but I had a neighbor right next door to me when I lived in New Jersey. So I'd bring the lights out because I was doing it live, and she'd be grabbing Lisa. What's he making? What's he making? I want some. You know, she yeah, didn't even know absolutely. what it was. But this is really a treat, and what a great way to finish off a meal. And, and uh, you know, while we're here, I, I want to give a little plug to the culinary team. We have a, we have a uh, I have a, a tremendous chef's team almost a hundred percent original team since we opened about a year ago and then we have a i think we have the best culinary team in in, in florida we have a really bunch of true professionals back there because mm -hmm. it's a hard a lot of hard work yeah, to do all this stuff from scratch and have it come out consistency every day and it's uh it's it's hard work and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of care and they do a fantastic job every day and i'm super proud of them you, you should be they really do and you know the whole staff not just the culinary staff but even the servers that i've met the bartenders super friendly super courteous i mean they remembered me from the first time i was in here yep absolutely and i you know we now with with the social media which you're a part of there's always the next uh review on Yelp or TripAdvisor and I, I love it when I go in there and I read that somebody had a great time mm -hmm. and they talked about the the server was friendly and the front desk yeah. people were accommodating and the manager stopped by and everybody was was friendly yeah. and had a smile that's what really makes a great experience and that's what we we're striving for yeah we are in a service oriented industry and as a chef lots of times we do our darndest but if the front of the house doesn't do in their part experience is ruined so here you got everybody working together and you don't have to worry about it. like i said everyone i've seen has been so friendly so accommodating just there to make your experience better and you know what we have a even though our restaurant's only a year old we have a 25 year uh legacy with gibson's restaurant group and gibson's steakhouse and uh their 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 leadership team is is really uh helping us we, mm -hmm. we our culture is is we want to have the Gibson's restaurant group culture here. Yeah. Um, so the boathouse culture is a little different version of the Gibson's culture. And the Gibson's culture is based all around um, customer service. Yeah. So so we've done everything in here from from chicken nachos to uh, pancakes for, for, for lunch. And if somebody comes in here and it actually happened about a week ago, somebody mm -hmm. wanted creme brulee and we didn't have it. We're going down the road to get a creme brulee from one of the other restaurants in Disney Springs and serving it to the customer because when they come in here, we literally won't say no to anything if it's physically possible to do. And that gives us a lot of pride and satisfaction ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you've done a masterful job here with the kitchen. I'm so happy that we got to meet. And again, it was because one of your servers. We were talking. I said, I have to bring the chef out here. I'm going, oh, yeah, the chef's going to stop working and come see me. And you did. And then from there, you know, we just became friends. And um, I've had a great time coming out here. And you've gone so over the top today with serving us these delicious dishes and talking to us and spending time. I, I can't thank you enough. Chef it's Bob. my pleasure. And I hope you have fun on your amphicar ride. Oh, we are. And believe me, I'll take some pictures of that, too.
All right, so I better get back to the kitchen now. Get back to work, and thank you all for watching. And I'm Chef Dennis, and I'm on the road at the Boathouse in Disney Springs in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to go eat, and I'll see you soon. I think we eat it.